Hello, everyone. This is Richard from Modern Health Span. We recently spoke with Professor Rodolfo Goya about a couple of papers that he has published in BioArchive. In today's video, I will provide a quick overview of the two papers and the results as an introduction to the interview. I think that both of the papers are really exciting. The first, because it showed improvement in cognitive ability, and the second, because it showed an extension of fertility, both through partial reprogramming in the brain. In both cases, as far as I'm aware, this is the first time that this has been shown. Here is the first of the papers, Cognitive Rejuvenation in Old Rats by Hippocampal OSKM Gene Therapy. Please note that this is in BioArchive, so it is a preprint and has not been peer-reviewed at this point. Professor Goya was the main author, and Dr. Steve Horvath was involved in assessing the epigenetic age of the rats. In fact, it was this tweet from Dr. Horvath where he called the study a step towards cognitive rejuvenation that first alerted us to the paper. Rats suffer from decreased spatial learning and memory with age, and this is associated with morphological and molecular changes to the brain, specifically in the hippocampus, a region of the brain heavily involved in learning and memory. In the study, they looked at young and old rats and old rats treated with Yamanaka factors. The intervention was to inject rat the rats with an adenovirus carrying all four of the Yamanaka genes along with green fluorescent protein into the hippocampus. The rats were all female. The young ones were aged 3.5 months, mid to late teens for a human. And the age rats were 25 months old, which for a human would be around 70 years. They were separated into three groups, young, old controls who were injected with green fluorescent protein gene only as a control, and those injected with OSKN plus the green fluorescent protein. Before we jump into the paper in detail, a couple of background items that I will cover at a very high level, but I hope that it will help to understand the paper if you are not familiar with them. The first, the Yamanaka factors. These are four genes, OCT34, SOX2, KLF4, and CMYK, normally shortened to OSKN which have the ability to turn normal cells, such as fibroblasts, into pluripotent stem cells. This process also has the effect of making the cells epigenetically younger, which is the reason for their use in this study. The second is AAVs, or adeno-associated viruses. These are a kind of virus which can infect human cells, but has no negative impact. They can have specific genes implanted within them, in this case, the Yamanaka factors that we just spoke about. They can then be injected into the host. For this study, this was the hippocampus of the rats, where they make their way into the cells. Here, they generate the proteins using the existing machinery of the cell. These proteins then impact the behavior of the cell. In this case, the Yamanaka factors appear to change the methylation of the DNA to look like that of a younger cell. The genes in the virus had the four Yamanaka factors and the GFP, or green fluorescent protein. Just as a side note here, the tetracycline response unit was included, which allowed intermittent activation of the genes in previous studies. However, it was not used in this study. We discussed this as well as why Dr. Goya included all four Yamanaka factors, rather than the three used by Dr. Sinclair in the previous experiment where he regenerated the neurons in the optical nerve. One last thing, to test the memory and the learning of the rats, they used a Barnes maze. This consists of a platform raised off the ground by 108 centimeters, which has 20 holes in it, one of which the target has a box underneath it. Visual cues are placed around the room to allow the rat to orientate itself Rats do not like to be out in the open and want to find somewhere to hide. However, 108 centimeters is too far for them to jump, so they need to find the hole and with the box underneath it. In this case, the rats had a total of six acquisition trials, or ATs, over three days to learn where the box is. In all, three items are measured, how long it takes the animal to find the escape box, how long the animal spends in the sector where the goal is, and the behavior in a probe trial on the following day, where the box has been removed and the rat is assessed by how long it spends in the sector where the box used to be. 
The treatment rats were injected with Yamanaka factors 30 days before the trial started and were given the Barnes maze test, as just described. As expected, the old controls did less well than the young controls. While the old rats with OSKM did better, but the p-value was only 0.06 and so did not quite reach significance. If the last two acquisition trials are used, the improvements did reach significance. Post hoc analysis is not good practice, so this needs to be viewed with caution, but this does show an improvement. Looking at the results from the probe trial, for how long the mice were in the GS3 sector, where the safe box used to be, the OSKM rats tended towards doing better, but it was again not significant. In the study, they also looked at epigenetic age and how the structure of the brain changed. In the interview, Dr. Goya talks more about these topics, so I won't cover them here. The second paper is this one. Regenerative gene therapy in the hypothalamus prolongs fertility in female rats. This is also a preprint in BioArchive. Let's have a quick look at this paper. Female rats stop being fertile at about 10 months, though this can be extended with IGF-1 therapy. In this case, the authors placed the Yamanaka factors, again paired with green fluorescent protein, into the hypothalamus of young rats, where the hypothalamus is the master controller of hormones in the body. The idea was that the rejuvenation of the hypothalamus would create a more youthful hormone environment and prolong younger physiological functions, such as being fertile. The rats were treated with gene therapy at four months of age. This is about 16 in human terms. There were 12 treated rats and 12 controls who only received the green protein gene. At 9.3 months, so 5.3 months later, the two groups of rats and a fresh set of 12 young rats were mated with the younger males. The rates of pregnancy were 83% for the young rats, 8.3% for the controls, and 25% for the treated group. The average litter size was 9, 3, and 3, respectively, and the mean body weight of the pups was slightly higher in both of the older groups. Previous studies have shown that ovulation ceases at 12 months, and this study showed that the Yamanaka factors regenerated the hypothalamus without any adverse effects. Of particular interest is that the Yamanaka factors were expressed in the rat brain for up to five months, but did not cause any of the ill effects seen when the transgenic mice are used to express these genes though it should be noted that we do not know how long the viral genes remain active after entering the cell. This is a topic that Dr. Goya discusses in more depth in the interview. Here are the results in a graphical format. We can see that the number of females who became pregnant was increased from one in the control group to three in the treated group compared to 10 in the young controls, though there was no difference in the number or weight of the pups between the two groups all the pups matured normally. These two papers are really interesting because they show improved cognitive behavior with partial reprogramming and also that continuous activation of the Yamanaka factors did not have the ill effects that have been seen in continuous activation in transgenic studies. If you would like to know more about these experiments, please watch our interview with Professor Goya, which we will be releasing in the next few days. Thank you for watching. I wish you all well and I will speak to you again soon.